Hello, everyone. So first of, first of all, let me acknowledge the, the other co-author of, of this uh, presentation and on the work I'm, I'm going to present, which is Alessandro, Guido, <coughs> Arvin, and, and Greg. I, I want to give you also, let's say, a, a, policy, a policy perspective in, um, in this presentation, and I, and I put this title, A Pale Green Revolution for, for the Green Deal. So, I, I'm sure you will understand a little bit this, uh, the concept during the, the, the presentations. And uh, this because I work for, um, for the European Commission at the Joint Research Center, which provides the scientific support for, for, um, uh, for, for the policymakers in, in, in Brussels. And uh, for this reason, I want to give you a uh, very brief overview of the main uh, climate uh, strategy and, and targets uh, in the EU. There is, a, starting from the next year, a, a key framework, which is called the 2030 uh, Climate and Energy Framework. <clears throat> According to this, the, the, the European Union is committed to reduce um, the, the, the greenhouse gas emissions by 40% in 2030, compared to the 1990s level, this for, for, for all the sector. And um, yeah, the, in, in this framework, there are different mechanisms um, that, that, that can be very, very complex, <clears throat> but I want to focus on more the, bi the biogenic, uh, let's say, part. Mm, uh, the, the, the agricultural sector is, um, is belong to the, uh, to the so-called non-ETS sector, non-emission trade assistance sector. And uh, in, in the agricultural sector, there are mainly accounted uh, non-CO2 emissions, so N2O and methane. While um, in the, um, the CO2 emissions are uh, accounted mainly in the, in the LULUCF sector, <clears throat> land use, land use change, and forest sector. And uh, for the first time, the, the novelty is that this, this LULUCF is formally included into the, the regulation. Before, <clears throat> under the, the Kyoto Protocol, you always see emission with and without <clears throat> the LULUCF. But in, in this case, the LULUCF is part of, of, of the regulation of the, of the schemes, for the accounting scheme. And uh, there is also an interesting rule, which is a, an odd debit rule for the period 2021, 2030, which means that the, the land use sector, the LULUCF sector, cannot generate an, any debit. Uh, so it can generate credits of CO2 that can compensate the others, but, but cannot generate any debit. And uh, for the non ATS sector, <clears throat> The target of our reduction for the for the whole sector is 30 percent uh, of greenhouse gas reduction compared to 2005. And just a side note that there, there will be also some upgraded of the current accounting methodology for for the, the LULUCF sector, and which are mainly concerned the, the the main biogenic gases of CO2 and 2 and and methane, of course. But uh, then uh, with the new commissions. <clears throat> The von der Leyen Commission's, let's say, um, strong input in place this uh, new Green Deal. The, good, the Green Deal is a, is a roadmap for, for Europe, very important. And one of the objectives of the Green Deal is to reach the neutrality, the complete neutrality of greenhouse gas emission by 2015. And uh, there is also a um, proposal uh, for, a, for a climate law to further reduce the, the greenhouse gas emission by 50, 55 percent by 2030, and to have neutrality in sorry in in the affluent sector. <clears throat> the affluent sector is um, the the ensemble of of uh, uh, the, the the agriculture and the forest and, and the other land uses. And uh, the, the objective, as, as I said, is to reach the neutrality, the zero emission by 2030. Right. But what are the, the current emissions in the affluent sector in, in Europe, in the EU? Um, let's focus, for instance, in, in the agriculture. I said that agriculture is a, uh, in, in the agriculture, we are counting for mainly N2O and, and, and methane emissions. And, and we see that after an initial phase of, of decreasing, uh, um, uh, decreasing emissions during the, the 90s. In, in the last years, we have a, a quite stable trend. 
And if we look at the LULUCF sector, which is mainly, as I said, CO2 emissions, <clears throat> one of the most important things is that um, the, the carbon forests, which were a, a kind of stable seek in, in, in the past year, now they, they started to, to decrease the, the, their capacity to, to, to store, to sequester carbon. These are data uh, which are member state, uh, let's say, report to UNFCCC. <clears throat> And uh, of course, um, there, there are also some emissions, CO2 emissions in, in, in the croplands and grassland that are also related to the cultivation of, of organic soils. And so if we consider now this trend and, and overall the trend of the forest, which, was <clears throat> which, was, uh, which is decreasing and um, uh, in, in, in the same capacity, <clears throat> we, we can start to, to doubt if the, the affluent sector could reach the neutrality by 2035. Considering also the, 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 the effect of the climate change, the extreme event, the fact that the forests are becoming older. And there is also a big question mark about <clears throat> how, uh, let's say, uh, the, the organic, uh, organic carbon pool will, will be sensitive to, to the global warming. It's a very, uh, let's say, doubtful, uh, difficult issue, which has a lot of uncertainty, but, but probably warming will accelerate the composition of, of carbon. And so the emissions. So <clears throat> it's, uh, it's very important to, in this view, try to maximize any mitigation potential. And, and this workshop is, is very important because <clears throat> it, it probably we, we have to, to start to look in beyond only the, the greenhouse gases emission, but also the, the, the effect of the radiative management. And um, this is particularly important in the agricultural sector because it's a net emitter of, of greenhouse gases. And you know that uh, in Europe, um, the, the, the new CAP is, um, has proposed a new green architecture where uh, try, is trying to deploy more um, natural climate solutions. And uh, again, so I wanted to, <clears throat> again, start from, from uh, a management that's already been discussed, but allow me to to go farther, which is the, 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 the cover crop management. Uh, to say that uh, we have a, an extensive, uh, let's say, uh, literature and, and data about the biogeochemical mitigation of, of uh, cover crops, uh, some uh, resume mentioned, some meta-analysis. It's more uncertain the, 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 the effect of cover crops in, on uh, the N2 emissions. It really depends if you have a leguminous in, in the, in the rotation uh, as cover crop if you incorporate or not the, 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 the biomass. And uh, indeed, we have relatively few study <clears throat> on, on the, let's say, biogeophysical mitigation on, on the effect, for instance, of, of the albedos on cover crops. One was already presented <clears throat> before by, 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 by Eric, where, and we see that in general, uh, we have a, a kind of a, a I would say mitigation, so more radiation, which is reflected back to the top of the atmospheres. But one of the of the problem is is that in the assessment in general, <clears throat> we don't have an, an integrated. So we have an integrated assessment, but, but we take pieces of uh, of data from one study or or another, and they're generally dealing with only one single component, or the biogeochemical or the biophysical mitigation. But what then also emerged yesterday is that we need them very consistent, let's say, framework um, to, to mitigate both the effects. And, and this is what I'm going to, to describe next, as we wanted to, to, um, uh, to, to use uh, this tool to understand the temporal trend and, uh, um, and uh, in, in time, but also in space, using a very consistent data model framework at EU level. So to, to describe that, I want to start with um, the LUCAS, which is the Land Use and uh, Coverage Area Frame Survey. Indeed, uh, it was a, a land survey uh, which has a, has a soil component. So we have a very extensive uh, soil sampling campaigns. We, I'm talking about 2,000, um, uh, 22,000 top soil samples collected <clears throat> all over the, the, the Europe in in, uh, in all, uh, let's say, land coverage, but half of that are on, on the agriculture. 
and where we analyze the main uh, physical chemical soil properties. And uh, we already have um, three, um, uh, three uh, campaigns of, of Lucas, 2009, 2015, and 2018. And uh, we use those, those data to let's say inform um, biogeochemical models <clears throat> well known which is the sand plus uh, so lucas provide data on on soil properties uh, in general and and soil information about the land use but we also um, include uh, other um, from from other source, sources uh, information about uh, fertilization uh, the, the, the crop rotations uh, the, the, the positions and, and so on. We try to, to describe as much as possible the, the management in, in, in that point. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> so what was uh, uh, our idea? So I'm, I'm just using the, the, the cover crop as, um, as an example of the potentiality of this uh, uh, model framework. Uh, our idea was to run a baseline <clears throat> where, where uh, we, we consider that there's no, uh, let's say, cover crops, and to run an, an alternative scenarios where we introduce the, the cover crops whenever there was at least two months between the, the, the harvest and, and, and the plantings of the two cash crop, main cash crop. And uh, for the baseline, uh, we assume that um, after the harvest, there is a, a period where the residues are standing, but, but then the, the soil is flow, so the soil is bare mostly during, during the, the winter in general. And with the model, it's very straightforward to calculate daily the difference in CO2 and CO2 emissions. But what we would like to do was also to try to calculate daily the difference in, in the albedo <clears throat> in order to have a very consistent, let's say, uh, assessment of, of, of the two effects. And uh, so I'm going to, to describe a little bit uh, the, the, the procedure that, that we have uh, done to, to, to calculate this. So first of all, for, for every Lucas points, we actually determine the nearby pure pixel by a methodology, <clears throat> which was, um, let's say, elaborated by, by, by Greg uh, Duvelier. And uh, the idea is, is because um, uh, nearby a pixel, nearby a points, uh, there could be a land cover that is no agriculture. So we would like to be sure that that find in the proximity of, of the Lucas points, a very clear signal of a, an agricultural <clears throat> area, an agricultural pixel. Then we started to extract time series um, of albedo and, and DVI, and, and we did it from Google uh, Engine using more than, than, than two years. The, here are reported only two years, but we did it for, for many years. And why <clears throat> this approach? Because at the end, we would like to establish a local relationship between vegetation cover and, and, and albedo. Um, this is a, is a good relationship. <clears throat> Well, you can see that basically when the, the vegetation is, is, is growing or the, the DVI, and DVI is, is increasing, uh, the albedo also the surface increase. And, and that means that here is the region where we have the, the bare soils and, and then here is the region where we go into the full coverage. This is very important because it's not necessarily like this. If we have a very clear soils, bright soils, we can also have this relation, a negative slope. So as long as the vegetation grows, we decrease the albedo. And, and this is important. So to, to have this, <clears throat> to find out this local relation in all the, in all the Lucas points. Then we, we found this very interesting paper, you know, which evaluate the relationship between biomass percentage, uh, ground cover, and the remote sensing indices across uh, six winter cover crops. It was very <clears throat> useful for us. And this, and this uh, paper shows that um, there is a very straight, uh, let's say, linear relation between the, the, the ground cover and the NDVI. So we basically, we, we can assume that uh, uh, basically at maximum NDVI, we have uh, the 100% the of ground cover and then 
it decreases linearly until we reach basically the, 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 the zero gram cover, the, the, the base on the bare soils. One of the problems that, that we have is that uh, the, the, the ascent uh, <clears throat> is a model that's not provide a Leferi index, but, but provide an above ground biomass. And so we have to, the, the first step was to convert um, uh, the, this ground-based biomass, uh, above ground uh, biomass, sorry, in, into coverage. And we use some relations that we find in, in this paper. And so we, we were able to, <clears throat> to convert at the end the, the, the biomass in coverage and in albedo. Okay, and this is um, <clears throat> what, what we formally done. Day by day, uh, we calculated the, the albedo change as described before. We multiply by the short wave income radiation and the atmospheric transmittance. And we have the relative forcings <clears throat> and annual relative forcings. And we use this matrix, the global volume potential that was presented <clears throat> yesterday to somewhat integrate in, in, in an anamatized temp the, the, the effect of, of the albedo and convert it into <clears throat> the, the CO2 equivalent. Um, something interesting is that we also, we, we have also done a global sensitivity analysis by Monte Carlo <clears throat> to understand how this that this final quantity, the, the global warming potential, is sensitive to the different, let's say, factors and, and assumptions that, that we have done. And, and we saw that, um, yeah, our, our, the, the bare soil albedo is very important. So if we don't estimate <clears throat> uh, very well this bare soil albedo, we can, uh, sorry, we, 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 we propagate a lot, lot of uncertainty. And uh, also the albedo max, <clears throat> it's uh, somewhat important. These were two factors that we used to convert the, the biomass, the daily sent biomass into, into um, grain cover, uh, grain, uh, ground cover, sorry. And, and these were <clears throat> the two factors of, of the global warming potential equation. So I'm going to, 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 to describe some of the results. In, in these figures, if we focus on these figures, we, we see that, um, uh, this represented the, the bare soil albedo with our uh, values, average values is 0 0.14. And uh, as shown also before by, by the other assessment of, of, of Eric, we, we, we see that there are some, some areas <clears throat> with soil that are particularly bright, especially in, uh, in, uh, in Spain in general, in, in, in this region. So <clears throat> we agree with the previous study. And this is our um, uh, change in albedo, which is a very quite a small number, considering yeah all, all the, the procedure we, we have done. But uh, one of the problems that many many studies <clears throat> are based on uh, snow free scenarios. While when there is the snow, that there could be problem because the snow is very bright, and if you have a cover uh, on top of that, you you decrease the the surface albedo. Uh, so um, we try to to do a very uh, let's say a worst case scenarios because it's very complex uh, in, in 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 calculating this effect. So the, fortunately, the models <clears throat> provide an estimation of the snow water equivalent that, that we converted into using a density in snow depths. And basically, our assumption was that. Uh, Above 20%, 20 centimeters of snow, there's no any effect of, of, of the cover crop because it's completely buried. But below uh, 20 centimeters, the crop is, is always emerging in proportion of uh, its biomass. This, as I said, is a worst case scenario because <clears throat> it could also not happen uh, that, that the crop, even below 20 centimeters of snow, it's completely covered, covered by the snow, but it's, it's very difficult to. to to estimate for a, for a, for a number of, of, of reasons. But in this way, we, we, have, we have at least, let's say, two extreme values. So the, the main effect is the, the real effect or the most likely effect is, is probably in between these two scenarios. And, and you can see when <clears throat> you consider that there's no, there are areas where you have a, a kind of um, worsening effect in which the, 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 the albedo is, is, is decreasing actually. When we look at the, at the relative force anyway, 
uh, I just wanted to say that in, in my convention, positive values indicate, uh, let's say, a, a mitigation. So in general, it is, it's, the, it's the opposite, but it, it's a mitigation. But under a snow free scenarios, we have in generally <clears throat> a positive a, a, a mitigation in terms of relative forcings. When there is, uh, th there's no, there are areas where it's probably not uh, uh, convenient to, to, to use them. Um, cover crop or at least very tall cover crops. And so, okay, let's go to the speakers. I want, I want to really to, to thank you, Devin, Eric, the previous speakers, because he's already, has already explained <laughs> my, my, my figures, but uh, I, at least uh, I know that someone has, has read this paper basically, but <laughs> I'm really, I'm really joking, but just, just to summarize, these are the, the, um, the, 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 the effects when, when we are plotted the uh, all in cumulative emissions. And uh, yeah, these are the, 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 the average of all the Lucas uh, simulations of the model simulation. And so we observe in a scenarios where we assume that the cover crops are the same albedo of, 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 of the vegetation, uh, the same color of, of the vegetation. Let's say that, that the, the carbon sequestration is, is the dominant effect. And there are some contribution, positive contribution from, from albedo. Positive in, in sense negative contribution, mitigation potential from, from, from the albedo, which is of course um, lower in, in, uh, in, uh, when, when we have uh, snow free scenarios. And this reduced when, when we have a, a, a snow scenario. But then we 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 talk uh, given this uh, the, the opportunity of these models we talk um, let's say the <clears throat> we were inspired by 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 a study led by uh, my a former colleague of mine uh, Lorenzo who is going to speak um, after me where they they actually tested in in the field a very some uh, uh, chlorophyll deficient intercropus in in this case soybean and uh, so we thought to run a scenarios assuming that. The, the, the cover crop could have the same bright color of um, like like this uh, soybean crop, and um, yeah, and uh, we also assume that that this crop uh, this cover crop is um, growing a little bit less than than uh, the normal one. You can see that this line, the, the carbon sequestration potential is lower, but we see on the other hand that the, the effect of the albedo was. Was actually dominant, and um, and there was a, <clears throat> a great potential of, of mitigation using this, this kind of a, of crop variety. So, in what 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 uh, let's say is in terms of accumulated values at, at European level. So <clears throat> we estimated this this number. So with our normal cover crops, the the potential. The mitigation potential is around 40 to 49 megatons of CO2 equivalent per year. And, but using the uh, chlorophyll deficient mutant crop, it, it could be, let's say, almost double. And uh, what does it mean in terms of, um, of uh, let's say, AU uh, efforts, AU, AU targets? <clears throat> this is our the, the level, more or less, of our, our emissions, total emissions in the, in the EU, greenhouse gas emissions from, from all the sectors. And we see that if we want to reach uh, different targets, we have to <clears throat> decrease annually the, this amount of, uh, of, uh, of uh, megatons of CO2 equivalent. And then and, and this, how this number compared to the, to, to let's say our objectives, our, um, it's, uh, it's a significant number, although uh, even this mitigation is not able to completely offset, of course, the, the emission from, from the agriculture, which were about <clears throat> more than 400 megatons of CO2 equivalent per, per year. And, uh, but then we, we, we started to have a, a very useful discussion with the, the review. <clears throat> and uh, because this, as you said, as you know, probably this, this um, um, the results were published in a paper in, in, in RRL. And um, yeah, this was already um, a figure pre presented yesterday by, 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 by Sonia. And, uh, and the fact was that um, the, the CO2 emission is a 
the CO2 is a very it's a well mixed gas. So it doesn't matter where you, where you sequester this gas. The, the effect is more, let's say, homogeneous globally. While the when we change the, the, the surface albedo <clears throat> uh, in, in an area, we have an effect at the top of the atmosphere, so we calculated. But we, are, we also trigger some uh, local and non-local effect because there are teleconnection with the climate. And, and we see that uh, if we, uh, in, in these scenarios, in, uh, there, there was a, a big increase of albedo in Europe. In general, we have a, a, a cooling effect <clears throat> And no many, let's say, uh, effects on, on, on precipitation. But, but uh, yeah, I would say that you in, induce some, some, some other effects uh, over the, the, the world or the planet. And uh, that's make the, the question if we can uh, somewhat include eventually the albedo, the mitigation effect of albedo in, in any uh, accountable scheme which is still a, an open question because you have an effect, but this effect, effect is not so really, uh, so some, let's say, side effects are, are not really controllable. Um, yeah, so I'm coming to, to this, to, to the conclusion that we, we set up a very coherent, uh, let's say, modeling framework to uh, estimate both the, uh, let's say, biogeochemical and the biogeophysical mitigation potentials. We see that the, the, CO, the CO2 sequestration is the dominant flux, but saturating times. And the change in albedo would be equivalent uh, to 99 to 413 between, let's say, uh, megagrams of CO2 equivalent by 2015. The, the effect of, of, of the albedo uh, on mitigation could be strongly increased using this client variety. But when we do it, uh, we have an effect at the top of the atmospheres, but we also trigger local effects and, and, and non-local effects. And that makes, uh, let's say, um, the, the, the question that, that's related to the question if uh, we somewhat, we, we can account for mitigation by, by relative um, uh, management in any, let's say, uh, formal scheme. And so this is why at the end I put this uh, the, 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 this title of my presentation. Uh, so I'm finished. I just wanted to say that, that <clears throat> most of the data of the paper of the scenarios are, are available under the European Soil Data Center. And I also wanted to, to make an advertisement because today um, they, they are presenting the EU Soil Observatory and uh, which is a good news for, 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 for I think, for, for all. And uh, yeah, there will be some web streaming events also in, in, the, in the afternoon too, afternoon if you are interested. And uh, that's it. <laughs>